of a additive. I am inviting Nicole to the stage and um, yeah, in one second, we'll get her to start talking to us. Hello, Addy. Hi, Nicole. I hope you're doing well today. Yes, I am. Thank you. Great. Thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, we're ready for you, Nicole. And um, Nicole will be speaking on the topic she titled Cybersecurity for Additive Manufacturing. If you don't mind, please tell us a bit about yourself, a bit about your company, and uh, we're ready for you. Please take it away. Absolutely. Let me just uh, share my presentation. Okay, can you see the presentation, Addy? Oh, not yet. Okay, it's saying um, error sharing the uh, presentation. So hold on a moment. Sounds good. Um, so, Addy, I'm having problems sharing the slides. Can I send them to you for you to share? Sure, you can do that. Please bear with us, we're almost there. Yeah, sorry, everyone. Um, so, um, Addy, let me know if you receive those. So, uh, while waiting for those to come through, um, my name is Nicole Santos. So, I work for Breakpoint Labs in the um, Washington, D.C. area. And Breakpoint Labs, we work in the cybersecurity space. And the work that we're currently doing is um, cybersecurity for additive manufacturing work. And we're performing that under um, an office of the Secretary of Defense Phase 3 CIBA. I don't have it yet. Yeah, got it. God, I don't know. It's not letting me, it's not letting me share. Mm -mm. Do you want to forward to me? I'll try. Okay. Nora here, by the way. <laughs>
Um, so let me just talk a little bit more while we're um, waiting for that. Um, so, oh, there we go. Um, Can you see so my screen? Yes. Uh, is it sharing the right page? It is now. That is during the presentation. You are faster than me. Perfect. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, okay. So um, if you could go to the next slide, please. Sorry. Okay, so this is a quick um, agenda of, <laughs> of what I'm going to be talking about um, today. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so at Breakpoint Labs, um, we've basically been uh, discovering that there's a fundamental knowledge and solution gap. Um, when it comes to additive manufacturing with regards to cybersecurity and the potential attacks um, that that could happen. Um, oh. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I just have to say we're on the wrong slides. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry. So um, is this the right slide or this one? Um, no, sorry, I I actually uh, sent you the wrong slides, Addy. I'm so Oops. sorry. All right. Uh, I think the share there's a there's a share button that looks like it's going left, not the present content. The share, uh, I think yes. that's the one. Is that the one you're clicking? So there are two buttons: there's share and there is present content. The yeah. share the share is the right one to use. Okay, it says share, copy, event, link, success. Mm -hmm. So on under here, you see a couple of buttons and there is present on, come cam, on, mic, and then there's share. And there is present content. Did you can you, did you see that share button? Um, no. Hmm. Nicole, if you want to resend okay, us your yeah. good slides over email, otherwise I can I can give it a try again. Um, sharing the right okay, slides. Hold on. I think I think. You we want have share? It there. Okay. Perfect. Can you see? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, okay. Um, so uh, we're in the third year of uh, monitoring industrial consult, um, control systems and operational um, technology monitoring. And one of the common findings in industrial control system cyber incidents is that there's a lack of visibility into um, uh, what is actually um, going on. Okay, so um, what am I actually talking about when I talk about an AM threat? Um, so I'm talking about a deliberate attempt by an individual or organization to compromise the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of systems or information. And when I talk about the AM environment, I'm talking about not just the 3D printers, but the um, software, the peripheral devices, including traditional IT infrastructure, USB drives, and also the um, network. Um, some of the consequences could be intellectual property theft, equipment failure, um, loss of revenue, or even sabotage. So there was um, some research carried out by three universities a few years back to illustrate how um, a drone propeller blade could be sabotaged by adding voids into the design file. And they replaced the original design file with an altered version. Um, that had voids in that were undetectable. When the drone flew two minutes into the flight, it fell out of the sky. Um, and how did they commit that cyber attack? Well, they gained access to the PC that was connected to the 3D printer um, using a phishing attack. And ultimately, all these consequences lead to a degraded trust in AM workflows and processes. So um, why, why do we need cybersecurity for AM? Well, there's been a prevailing philosophy of let's just not connect our 3D printers to a network. If they're not connected, um, then we're not going to have a cybersecurity threat. But that 
that isn't really true. Um, when you're using um, um, computers, your IT workstations, and then you're transferring information on flash drives over to your 3D printer, um, you have a threat because your, your computers, they need to be connected to allow for downloads, um, updates and patches and things. So um, do not connect is, is not the best solution. And AM needs to be connected because with industry 4.0, we're all moving towards um, a more connected way of operating. And we want to really take advantage of that. Um, we want to be competitive globally. Um, we want to have the benefits. So we want to be able to control and monitor and manage our prints from anywhere. And it also helps with predictive or um, preventative maintenance. Um, if you can um, look at these prints remotely. Uh, we also want to ensure integrity, not just for our digital files, but our business operations and supply chain. Um, the Department of Defense came out with an additive um, manufacturing strategy, and they understand we need to connect, be connected. And this is a quote from it saying that um, we need to realize the full value of the AM processes by updating standards and enabling AM printers to be um, securely connected to the network. So everything will be connected and we need to make sure it's done so securely. Um, so um, already um, the manufacturing industry is a target for cyber attacks. So less than a year ago, malicious actors um, developed custom made tools for targeting industrial um, control system devices. And these tools enabled them to scan for um, compromise and control affected devices. So once they'd established that initial access to the operational technology network, um, they were able to control everything. And um, um, basically, they would be able to uh, disrupt and sabotage and potentially cause physical harm to the environment. Um, last year in March, the global energy sector was targeted with ransomware that was designed to enable um, physical damage with potentially catastrophic effects. Um, and um, they wanted to disrupt, if not paralyze, the delivery of critical energy services um, to places such as hospitals. Um, two other attacks that I've listed here um, where trade secrets were targeted. And these malicious actors, they're paid professionals, so it's their full-time job to um, carry out these cyber attacks. So we really need to be um, prepared for them. Um, so here at Breakpoint Labs, we had a red team perform a penetration test against an FDM printer. Um, so essentially, we sent some hackers loose on 3D printers to see what they could mess up and they tried 10 different um, attack scenarios. Nine out of those 10 scenarios were successful. And so uh, we found out that it's very easy to subvert the slicing software, um, to modify parameters such as the infill, the geometry, the print orientation, and to manipulate the G code um, before a job or even during a job. And why was that so easy? <clears throat> Well, uh, plain text protocols for somebody to learn, uh, lack of robust authentication, lack of visibility into what was happening. And also we found that many people are treating um, 3D printers kind of like traditional printers or traditional uh, manufacturing devices, whereas they should be treating them more like connected IT devices. Um, so, um, what we also found is that there's really been a lack of knowledge into um, cybersecurity for AM and a lack of um, robust cybersecurity related processes <clears throat> for AM. Um, so here is just a, a brief overview of um, G code. Um, so here we can see the commands that begin with G, those describe the positions um, of the nozzle head, um, primarily for FDM printers. The M commands um, direct the machine's actions. So 
we can see here fan speed setting or um, heating the print bed, things like that. And um, it's very easy to uh, manipulate this G code. There is a standard G code, but there are also some um, a variety of commands different companies add in um, that can add in their own commands, usually before um, or after the standard geometric codes. And I'm telling you about that because um, we actually here have some simple examples of how easy it is to edit that G-code and disrupt the 3D printing process. So this first picture here on the left, um, that's um, we used a flash forge printer for that. And it has, there's a display on the printer, which shows an image of the part that you're going to print. And it's really easy to go into that G code. And there's a little header file um, called a .gx header file. And it's really easy to change that to display anything. So you can see in this image, the what we wanted to print um, is the first picture. And so that image was displayed, um, but actually what printed was the image below. Um, so that's just a simple example of just a few lines of um, code changing something on the 3D printer. Um, coming to the middle, photo, uh, middle picture here, um, this is illustrating where we changed the um, gyroid info pattern to a grid. Um, it's not easily detectable once you have your printed part, but obviously has consequences in terms of strength for your part. Just a um, very simple and easy thing uh, for a malicious attacker to do. The um, third picture on the right there, this is from um, uh, Lulzbot Taz Sidekick. They have a little um, display panel there. You can display a QR code. That QR code could easily be um, manipulated to um, take you to ransomware. So um, what is needed to secure AM? Well, there's no silver bullet solution out there. Um, continuous monitoring and visibility are what's needed. So we need to uh, foster a culture of um, good cyber hygiene. So what does that mean? Uh, multi-factor authentication, um, keeping AM and IT resources updated, performing backups, digitally signing your CAD drawings, your G-code files, um, validate signatures before using them. We also need to increase our situational awareness. So understand your environment, understand what can be at risk, um, and employ processes that really um, enable you to manufacture securely. Um, another part is quality insurance, uh, quality assurance. So we know that um, verifying a manufactured object can be challenging and the existing efforts really focus on that geometry inspection or um, expensive CT scanning. But cybersecurity also needs to be addressed, and that can be part of the quality assurance part too. So um, what about blockchain? So um, there is some talk of using blockchain to uh, solve part of this. Um, it's not necessarily the most efficient solution for AM, and I'm going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to give a very quick overview of, of what it is. So there are three core properties that I've listed there. Um, but in very simple terms, all um, peers participating in the blockchain um, can view and verify that all information blocks are valid. There's a And that gives a consensus. But there are different interpretations or um, understanding of what blockchain is. So if you're going to use one, are you going to use public? Um, are you going to use private? How are you going to vet these peers and establish their identity if you're using a blockchain? The, the storage issue is a big one. So um, we know that Bitcoin uses blockchain. They use 450 gigabytes, and that's growing every day. We would need even more for AM, um, especially if you're trying to store a file on a blockchain. All the peers in the blockchain are going to need a huge amount of um, processing power. And for these small and medium-sized businesses, 
um, that make up the majority of manufacturing, they don't necessarily have the expertise or resources for that. Um, also, from a security standpoint, we need to keep all the peers running the same up-to-date versions, um, which can be difficult to achieve. And even if we manage to pull this off and um, we have data provenance, there's still the risk that your 3D printer itself could have malicious activity, which wouldn't even matter if your file was um, secured with blockchain. Um, we also know that um, blockchain can be uh, as illustrated by a couple of examples there. So um, Bison is the solution at Breakpoint Labs that um, we have for monitoring our additive manufacturing resources. So if you look at the image on the right, that's taken from Bison. So on the left-hand column, we can compare um, a trusted file to what is actually printed on the right-hand side, or we can compare two prints of the same part. So what's happening here is um, Bison is receiving the raw G-code commands from the 3D printers um, that are being passively monitored. So the G code that's uh, being executed is being monitored and then and then um, put here, and it's automatically reconstructing the object, and it's capturing a complete um, historical record of the temperatures throughout the process too. And then if you look down at the bottom, this is the actual side by side comparison of um, the G code. So it's this fine grained comparison. And um, you can identify discrepancies between um, the trusted file and what has actually been executed by the 3D printer um, or between different print jobs of the same part to see if they're um, the same. And you can see here this says 97% similar for this file. Um, so once you've identified um, um, discrepancies between um, what has been executed and what you actually wanted, um, you know that there's been some anomalous activity. And if you look at the photo on the left, you see that little box on the back of the monitor. Um, that um, is the Bison sensor that is detecting the commands um, coming from the 3D printer. So it's a very um, um, small device. So um, how can we leverage that data that um, Bison is collecting? Well, we can, it can really aid us in establishing a baseline of normal operating operations. So um, we can figure out our manufacturing patterns. So we can identify um, a set of behaviors within an organization. So. For instance, um, if user A usually submits jobs at 9 a.m. and one day user B is submitting something at 1 a.m., um, we have this uh, baseline that we know that um, this is a deviation from the normal activity and um, we can pick that up and um, say that's anomalous activity. Also, when we have this fine-grained data, it enables faster and more accurate root cause analysis to why our part is different. We can also take that data and that can be used uh, to be exported, ex um, exported to other um, scientific um, workbenches. So Bison has over 30 detectors. Um, so there are varying degrees of severity of these um, anomalous activity detectors. So something very critical might be the hot end crash. So basically if a nozzle drops down mid print and goes into the, the part that's already been printed, um, we know that during a regular print, this is never gonna happen. So the detector will pick this up. Um, this could be very dangerous. There could be, um, toxic fumes and even fire um, and you know some people are doing prints overnight so they're not necessarily right there to monitor this but bison can detect this um, something that's less critical is maybe um, like a detection of when um, the factory reset of the firmware has occurred
So what happens when this um, anomalous activity happens? Well, the operators can be notified um, and they're notified and they're provided with information about what happened. So um, which device, why it happened and also recommendations to uh, investigate this issue. Um, and also when you have a historical record of, of what has happened to the printer, the device, the design file, um, it gives you a full picture and really visibility into your whole systems. So what are the key takeaways from this? Um, with industry 4.0, everything will be connected. Um, the manufacturing industry has been and will be subject to more cyber attacks. The malicious cyber actors can easily sabotage AM processes. And lastly, we need to have visibility into AM processes so that we can respond quickly and in a forensically sound manner to cyber attacks. And with that, um, any questions, here's my contact info. And um, also down there, we have a blog. So that's a link to our blog. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Nicole. That was a very important conversation to, that you, you have started with us. Oftentimes when people think about additive, there is very less focus on cybersecurity or any attacks. People use different USB to put in their data. People use different things, especially when you're, they're doing small scale 3D printing. So this was a very useful presentation, at least for me. Uh, I'll take a couple of questions that we have here uh, and, and see who, okay. So someone is uh, someone is uh, as asking. Uh, Carol started with com commending you, and she said, "Thank you for the for this heads up. This is very important for any medical or personal device that is printed." Uh, she's asking if you have any guidelines that three D printing could adapt from for for medical devices regarding to cybersecurity. Um. <clears throat> so I think I think what she's asking there is. Um, are you talking about medical 3D printing? Um, I think that's what she's she's discussing there. Yeah. Um, I think really knowing your environment, knowing that um, having it be not connected is not helping. You really need to have that um, that visibility into what's happening. Um, also following guidance from NIST in terms of securing IT related processes will will go a long way to um to helping so nist has a cybersecurity framework um that is very helpful to to helping secure this too i hope that answers the question i think so i believe this is the only question we have for you nicole thank you so much for your time thank you for sharing the progress of your work with us uh um, Nicole will stay around, and uh, if you have questions or you want to have discussion with her, please uh, wait around to be able to talk to her. Uh, I believe she's on social media uh, as well, so you can find her on LinkedIn if you'd like to take this discussion further. And again, thank you so much, Nicole. We hope to see you around. Thank you. All right, thanks.